In this video trade, we look at trading around a core position. What does it mean? How do you do it? Hey guys, warm welcome to you. So what does trading around a core position really mean? And what's the point of it and how would you do it? So trading around a core position is pretty much as it says it is, guys. You've got your chart here, you've got your position. Let's say you think that this market is going up. So let's say XYZ stock or XYZ market. It's chugged along and you decide to go long here. Let's just put a long. Now you might buy a thousand shares. Let's use a thousand for argument's sake. So you've gone along a thousand shares. So I was going to put a, a tally up here. You've got another thousand shares and you think the market's going to go up to, let's use our purple pen that we happen to have in the pocket here. Uh, let's say you think the market is going to go up to here. That's your target round here. And your stop might be, let's say your stop is down here. Okay, so there's your target. Just put T for target. So you've got your position, the thousand shares, and you're allowing yourself, and this is the important thing, guys, you have to have it in your plan. This, as with any strategy, it has to be planned out beforehand. Your maximum position size is 3,000 shares. All right, so you've got a max, max of 3,000 shares. And this could be whatever, it could be you know, three pound a point, 30 pound a point, 300 pound a point, if you're spread betting, 30,000 shares, it doesn't matter. This is just for a kind of hypothetical example purposes. So off we go, we've got a thousand shares here and you might say to yourself, you know what, I, I feel like I've chased that a little bit. So um, I, I don't mind buying on a pullback. So let's say it kind of pulls back a little bit now and then you buy again. So let's put number two. So I'm gonna put number one here, uh, number one. Then let's say you buy again number two here. And now let's say the market lifts back up a bit. So the market kind of pops up. You get a little bit of a burst. It breaks out of that high. Everything's happy. You've still got a long way to go for your target. You might then close that thousand shares, right? So you've had another thousand on here. Uh, that probably max should be separation. You've had another thousand, then you've taken a thousand off and you've banked, let's say you've banked in there 50 pips or 50 cents, $50, whatever it may be. So you put that, so you put some money on the table. So let's say you've put on a hundred quid or something, a hundred dollars. Uh, these numbers won't add up with the cents, but you get the point. Then you might say, well, I'm a net, I'm still net long a thousand. Market then chugs up. Um, you might then say, okay, well, you know what, the market's uh, still running on. I, I might actually you know, buy some more. So then you buy another batch here, um, uh, batch number three, so you go plus a thousand. Uh, this now kind of pulls back and you think, oh, you know, I've not done so well out of that. So maybe then you take out your thousand there and you take a little bit of a loss, whatever that may be. The point is, I mean, that's not the ideal scenario. The point is what you my ideal scenario is that you're buying on pullbacks and scalping in combination with your core position. So whilst that may well happen, and this is the point I've made is that you still have to manage the risk, you may well buy your third batch on pullbacks. So let's say you pulls back here and you think, you know, this is a great level to buy. So let's say you buy another thousand here. And let's say it goes a little bit lower, you've got the maximum ability to buy another 1,000. So you buy another 1,000, you, st you see it kind of lifting up. So there's, buy, there's kind of point, uh, point 0.3 here, uh, you know, point 0.4 here, depending on what you're doing. That was our, uh, that was our initial buy, that was our second buy, that was our exit. But let's say we bought again and we've bought again here. You might have got 3,000, you're scalping around the position. So let's say the market now goes back up. The point of the whole strategy, let's say you take off the 2000 as you break to the high, the point of the whole strategy is you have two trades almost running at once. One is the swing trade of the long here of a thousand units from point one here on the top of there. And multiple other trades, we've had a trade off here from point two up to the highs. We bought again here, we bought again here. This happens to be two, two buys before we closed it, but we're scalping around a position as well. So we're trading individual setups like these buying these pullbacks and within a core long position. So that's what trading around a core position means. It means we've got a core position, thousand units, we've got a maximum allocated position. That order of magnitude might be different. It might be 1500 is your max. You've got a thousand, but you're allowed to trade up to 1500. You might not want to have that because that scalp, scalping losses might not do any of the good work you got from the swing. It depends on your strategy and what's your, your um, kind of strengths as well. So you've got the core position, market moves in your direction, maybe pulls back, buy some more. The point is you take it off and then you take some on and off, some on and off, but you always have that original 1,000 shares or whatever set that may be, but you're adding more, you're taking off more, you're just basically trading around it and using other strategies to help you get more juice from the market. Example, when you might use this, you might use this if you were swing trading. Let's say you bought, um, 
an index on a Monday afternoon and it's chugging on nicely on Tuesday. And let's say on Tuesday, you know, you, you, you day trade it a little bit, you buy a little bit more, you sell a little bit more. Uh, Wednesday, you don't do anything. Thursday, you then trade a little bit as well. You're trading around the core position, still in the direction of the trade. That's the point as well. If you're long, you're not coming out of the trade and back in here. That's, that's, that's a different thing. Trading around a core position generally means you know, you're buying more, you're selling that, you're buying more when you feel it's an opportunity, a short term opportunity, and you're selling that, and you're just playing this and playing the game of trying to scalp those little moves while still weathering the bigger moves with the core position. You could also do this if you're an investor, right? So just to extend our time frames out, you're low on a stock, but you're also swing trading it more aggressively with perhaps more size on a multi week basis or multi day basis based on something that fits your strategy. Example that it's pulled back, it's been strong. You invested early on, you think, you know what, this thing's going to rip to highs, it's got at least a kind of a week worth of rally in it. That's my hypothesis. Let me add a few thousand shares on it, ride that, come out. Only because I'm coming out because I don't want to hold it longer term, I don't want to hold through the big waves. I want to trade the smaller undulations and the small waves and have my core position for the longer term moves. And of course, the smaller core position, you can ride some of those bigger drawdowns, bigger moves over a longer time frame. Anyway guys, that's trading around a core position, do a short time frame, high time frame, up to you. Pretty decent strategy. Um, I, I quite like it myself under the right conditions. You've got to be super disciplined. You can't be in like full size here and let it all come back and undo all the hard work of that swing because that's super frustrating then. Whatever you're doing there, guys, you know the score. Keep risk managed. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.